Advanced.team. Holy cow. I've never seen a more aptly named website. It is clear that this required a team of people who were very advanced. And thank you, Newly Dev, for pointing me to this site. I wish I had time to get a degree in fluid dynamics so I could teach you this effect. But since I don't, I'm going to try for this one here. What I like about this effect is that they kept it tasteful. Had they chosen to keep the static particles going the entire time you were hovering, it would have started to get a little unbearable. But keeping the duration short is just enough to give you an interesting experience without being too much of a bother. The way I see it, there's a couple of things going on here. One, the image zooms in about halfway through the animation. And two, this sort of particle effect occurs where the image almost dematerializes before morphing back to its original form. Let's see how close we can get. But before we do that, somehow I actually managed to land a sponsor that is incredibly relevant to my channel. Frontend Masters has hundreds of super high quality courses that they constantly update as things change within the landscape. They have a whole range of full stack topics covering everything from from popular frameworks, languages, platforms, authentication, and a ton more. It can almost be overwhelming to figure out which courses to take, which is why they've created a ton of different learning paths that walk you through exactly which courses you'll need to hit a certain goal. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, there's a ton of content you'll find useful. I'll leave a link in the description, so definitely check them out if you're in the market for some top-notch learning material. Okay, why don't we head over to CodePen and start building out a card. You can customize yours however you want, but really we just need a rectangular container that I'll give a border so we can actually see it. Let's find a decent image, copy and paste it inside, and make it take up 100% of the available space. Don't forget to set object fit to cover so the aspect ratio matches the one we set on the card. When we hover the card, we want it to pulse in and back out. So let's create a new animation called pulse where we literally just start and end the size at one and at the halfway point, we can bump it up a bit. And now when we hover the card, we'll trigger our pulse animation, giving it a duration and a timing function that look nice. How do I know what duration and timing function look nice? Well, I don't, but this team of advanced people clearly do. So I'll just mess around with these values a while, trying to match what they did till I throw up my hands in frustration and decide that one of the default values will have to do. So now our image expands, but we don't really want to see the excess. So let's chop it off with overflow hidden on the card. Now here's where things get interesting. I don't have a lot of experience with SVGs, but I do know that they scare me tremendously. That being said, it's an extremely powerful tool and I was able to learn just enough to make this thing work. Allow me to explain as best I can. SVG essentially gives you very fine tuned control over the pixels within a specified space. You can do anything from defining a simple circle on up to custom curves and even combining different shapes and paths into complex scenes. One of the really cool things that SVG lets you do with pixels is filter them through different effects. For instance, we can set up an SVG that doesn't even have to be rendered out. Within that SVG, we can set up a definition of a filter that we'll call noise. And it's here that we'll create a new filter effect using the turbulence element. Thanks to this super cool website, we can take a closer look at exactly what our turbulence filter is doing. Make sure the type is set to fractal noise and then start adjusting the base frequency in the X direction. You should begin to see some vertical lines. And if we do the same thing in the Y direction, the lines are now horizontal. And when we combine them together, we get what appears to be a bunch of random particles. We can even go so far as to adjust the configuration of the random particles by changing the seed. But you might be wondering why we would care about the specific configuration if all of the particles appear random anyways. Well, in this particular case, it's not so much about each configuration individually. It's more so about the fact that if we change this value fast enough, we start to achieve a static fuzz effect almost almost like you'd get when you lose signal on your TV. Okay, so now we have a staticky filter effect called noise that we defined inside of a hidden SVG. But how do we apply this static effect to our image? And how do we animate the seed value so our static isn't quite so static? Well, since we named our filter noise, we can now go into our CSS and apply that filter to our image by passing the ID value into the filter property. So now we have some static, but we've lost our image. What if there was a way to map our static to our image? You know, so our image becomes staticky. Fortunately, there's this thing called a displacement map that can do exactly that. Let's add one to our filter and tell it to take in the original source graphic, which is just whatever graphic you're applying the effect to. Let's specify that the result of our staticky effect is called static and then pass that into the map as well. Okay. So we defined our static effect, told it to map itself to whatever image we passed in, and then we linked it to our card image. So why isn't it doing anything yet? It's because by default, the scale of our effect is set to zero. So if we increase this value to say five or 10 or 20, we'll see that our effect finally starts to do its job. And now there's just two things remaining. 
animating the static, and making that animation occur only when we hover the card. You might be thinking that this would require some sort of fancy pants JavaScript to modify the seed value over time. And while that's certainly one way to do it, thanks to the animate element, we don't need any JavaScript at all. We just have to tell it which attribute to animate, what values to animate between, and since our other hover effect takes 800 milliseconds, let's use the same value here. If we set the repeat count to indefinite, we can finally see how this static effect is going to work. Work. But we don't want it repeating forever, we only want it to happen once. And we also don't want it to begin until we hover our card. Lucky enough, they made a property called begin that lets us pass in an element ID followed by the name of the event. So now our effect works on hover, but we still have one last issue. Since we set the scale to 20 by default, our image is fuzzy before our animation begins and then stays fuzzy after our animation ends. But that's not how the original worked. They found a way to only apply the static effect during the hover animation. If you hadn't guessed yet, we can achieve the same thing using the animate element once again. Let's copy the one we used here and paste it inside of our displacement map. We can change the value to zero by default, swap out the attribute name for scale, and then tell the value to go from zero to whatever we want, and then back to zero. What this means is that our card now appears completely normal while it's waiting for the user to interact with it. At the exact moment the mouse enters the card, the scale of our static effect begins increasing from zero up to a maximum of 40 at the halfway point, and then back down to zero. Because we synchronize this animation with the animation of the seed value, what we're left with is a randomized static filter that phases in and back out. Last but not least, let's not forget our CSS pulse animation that simultaneously adds a zoom effect to this process as well. Holy, I can't imagine anyone made it this far, but if you did, uh, here's another one.